This is a JavaScript course outline I have generated using ChatGPT. In this video, we're going to talk about objects. And if you want to find out about basic concepts, functions, or arrays, I have made videos about them. I'll put the link in the description. So we're going to be looking at creating and accessing object properties, adding and modifying object properties, and iterating over objects. Let's start with creating objects using object literals and using the object constructor. Here is the response from ChatGPT. In JavaScript, there are two main ways to create objects, using object literals and using the object constructor. Using object literals, you can create an object by enclosing a set of comma-separated key-value pairs in curly braces. Here's an example. So we're defining let a person, which is going to have name, an age, and an occupation, all within curly braces, separated by columns and commas. Console.log person name outputs John Doe. Let's actually copy this so Visual Studio Code and run it. Here we go. We get John Doe 30 and developer. You can access the values of an object by the dot and then the key notation. Person.name, person.age, person.occupation. Using the object constructor, you can create an object using the new keyword followed by the object constructor. Here's an example. Let person, and it's a new object. Then we say person.name, and it's going to be John Doe. Person.age, 30. Person.occupation, developer. And this gives us the same outcome. Let's take a look. If we run it, we get the exact same outcome. It is worth noting that while object literals are more concise and easier to read, the object constructor can be useful when you need to create multiple objects with similar properties. Next, we're going to be talking about accessing object properties using dot notation, using bracket notation. We are continuing to ask JGPT to teach us about these topics. In JavaScript, there are two main ways to access the properties of an object, using dot notation and using bracket notation. Using dot notation, you can access an object property by placing a dot after the object, followed by the name of the property. Here's an example. So we've already looked at this example. Using bracket notation, you can access an object property by placing the property name inside square brackets after the object. You can use either a string or a variable containing the property name. Here's an example. Let's grab this. There we go. Here what happens is uh, let prop equals name. We are simply assigning the name key over here. To a variable called prop so we can we can actually log out person in curly brackets prop which will equal to name and then we can also incur in square brackets age and occupation we can and we print out we again get the same result now let's take a look at adding and modifying object properties using the assignment operator which is the equal sign and using the object that define property method we are again asking ChatGPT to give us an explanation with examples. In JavaScript, there are two main ways to add or modify the properties of an object, using the assignment operator and using the object that defined property method. Using the assignment operator, you can add or modify a pattern property by assigning a value to it. Here's an example. So we're declaring an empty object, and then we're, we are assigning person.name to John Doe. And then we log out, we'll log this out, we get John Doe. And then we can change it to person.name being Jane Doe. And then this will change the name key of the object. If we run this, we get Jane Doe. But if you were to comment this out and run it, in the first assignment, it's John Doe. And then the second assignment changes that to Jane. Here we go. Using the object.define property method, you can add or modify a property by passing an object with property descriptor to it. The property descriptor is an object that describes the property, such as its value, writability, and enumerability, and configurable. Here's an example. Now, these are pretty cool, the writability and enumerability. Let's take a look. Again, we're defining an empty object, again, the person. And then we say object with capital O dot define property. And we are entering person to reference this empty object. 
and then we're adding a new key called name. And the value of that name is going to be John Doe. Writable is going to be true, which means that it, uh, it, can, be, it can be changed. Enumerable is true, which means that we can actually access it through a for loop or something that this, uh, this key is iterable over. Uh, I'm not sure what configurable is. We can ask that to JGPT. So if you were to console log this, we get John Doe. And then we can actually change it to Jane Doe in the second, with the second assignment. And then if you log it out, we get Jane Doe. So let's have this example here. All right. And if we run this, we're going to log out Jane Doe because it's been changed. But what if, if we were to change the writable to false? This would mean that we are unable to change. Oh, we are able to change it because we are redefining the property name. But for example, if we were to just say person.name equals Jane Doe, now we won't be able to change. See, it remains John Doe, although we're trying to assign it to Jane Doe, because we have declared the writable to be false. It's worth noting that while the assignment operator is more concise and easier to use, the object that define property method is more powerful because it allows you to control how the property behaves and whether or not it can be modified. Let's ask what configurable is. I'm just asking what is configurable. In JavaScript, when you use object define property method to add or modify an object property, you can pass an object with a property descriptor that describes the property. One of the properties is configurable. The configurable property of the property descriptor is a boolean that indicates whether or not the property can be deleted from the object and its attributes other than the value and the writable can be changed. If it is set to true, then the property can be deleted and its attributes can be changed. If it is set to false, then the property cannot be deleted and its attributes cannot be changed. Here's an example. Let's just copy this. Actually, let's read more what it's saying. So what's happening? In this example, the property name is created. Okay, you can see it here. Uh, with the configurable property set to true. So it can be deleted from the object using the delete operator. See, delete operator here, person.name. It's worth noting that if you try to delete a property that has configurable, that has configurable set to false, it will not be deleted and you will get a type error. Let's test this out. So if you were to run this now, we get John Doe and we get undefined because in this line we are deleting it. But if you were to change configurable to false and then run it, we are not getting the error actually, but we are unable to delete it because the second one also prints out. Now sometimes ChatGPT makes mistakes like these, so it's always good to go to the original documentation as well. This is the uh, or this is the legit original JavaScript documentation at mozilla.org. I'll put a link in the description. This is really useful. You can search it for uh, anything you would like, such, such as objects, and you can learn all about it. Now let's take a look at adding and modifying object properties using the assignment operator, which is the equal sign, and using the object.define property method. We are again asking ChatGPT to give us an explanation with examples. In JavaScript, there are two main ways to add or modify the properties of an object, using the assignment operator and using the object.define property method. Using the assignment operator, you can add or modify a pattern property by assigning a value to it. Here's an example. So we're declaring an empty object, and then we're, we are assigning person.name to John Doe. And when we log out, we'll log this out, we get John Doe. And then we can change it to person.name being Jane Doe. And then this will change the name key of the object. If we run this, we get Jane Doe. But if you were to comment this out and run it, in the first assignment, it's John Doe. And then the second assignment changes that to Jane. Here we go. Using the object.define property method, you can add or modify a property by passing an object with property descriptor to it. The property descriptor is an object that describes the property, such as its value, writability, and enumerability, 
and configurable. Here's an example. Now these are pretty cool, the writability and enumerability. Let's take a look. Again, we're defining an empty object, again, the person. And then we say object with capital O dot define property. And we are entering person to reference this empty object. And then we're adding a new key called name. And the value of that name is going to be John Doe. Writable is going to be true, which means that it, uh, it, can be, it can be changed. Enumerable is true, which means that we can actually access it through a for loop or something that this, uh, this key is iterable over. Uh, I'm not sure what configurable is. We can ask that to JGPT. So if you were to console log this, we get John Doe. And then we can actually change it to Jane Doe in the second, with the second assignment. And then if you log it out, we get Jane Doe. So let's have this example here. All right. And if you run this, we're going to log out Jane Doe because it's been changed. But what if, if we were to change the writable to false? This would mean that we are unable to change. Oh, we are able to change it because we are redefining the property name. But for example, if we were to just say person.name equals Jane Doe, now we won't be able to change. See, it remains John Doe, although we're trying to assign it to Jane Doe because we have declared the writable to be false. It's worth noting that while the assignment operator is more concise and easier to use, the object that define property method is more powerful because it allows you to control how the property behaves and whether or not it can be modified. Let's ask what configurable is. I'm just asking what is configurable. In JavaScript, when you use object define property method, to add or modify an object property, you can pass an object with a property descriptor that describes the property. One of the properties is configurable. The configurable property of the property descriptor is a Boolean that indicates whether or not the property can be deleted from the object and its attributes, other than the value and the writable, can be changed. If it is set to true, then the property can be deleted and its attributes can be changed. If it is set to false, then the property cannot be deleted and its attributes cannot be changed. Here's an example. Let's just copy this. Actually, let's read more what it's saying. So what's happening? In this example, the property name is created. OK, you can see it here. Uh, with the configurable property set to true. So it can be deleted from the object using the delete operator. See, delete operator here, person.name. It's worth noting that if you try to delete a property that has configured but that has configurable set to false, it will not be deleted and you will get a type error. Let's test this out. So if you were to run this now, we get John Doe and we get undefined because in this line we are deleting it. But if you were to change configurable to false and then run it, and we are not getting the error actually, but we are unable to delete it because the second one also prints out. Now, sometimes ChatGPT makes mistakes like these, so it's always good to go to the original documentation as well. This is the uh, or this is the legit original JavaScript documentation at Mozilla.org. I'll put a link in the description. This is really useful. You can search it for uh, anything you would like, such such as objects, and you can learn all about it. Next, let's take a look at iterating over objects using for in loop using the object.keys method and the for of loop, using the object.values method and the for of, and using the object.entries with the for of loop. Okay, let's see what ChatGPT has to say about this. In JavaScript, there are several ways to iterate over the properties of an object, using the for in loop, using the object.keys method, yeah, and object.values and object.entries using with the for of loop. Using the for in loop, you can iterate over the properties of an object by using the in keyword. Here's an example. Okay, so we are saying for, and then let key in person in parentheses. So we are checking each and every key, and then we're console logging it. Key plus, I mean colon, which is, uh, and then the key, and then the key. If in the in the first instance, it's going to be name, so person name, person age, and person occupation. That's test this out. 
If we run this, we should get the values, name, age, and occupation, keys and the values, because we're also logging the keys. This is pretty cool. This will output, yep, we have seen this. It's worth noting that for in loop, iterate over the properties in the prototype chain as well, and the order of properties may not be guaranteed. Hmm. Maybe this is worth asking. This is, uh, we can ask this maybe back again to ChatGPT. Using the object.keys method and the for of loop, you can iterate over the keys of an object. Here's an example. Okay, so uh, for of, this was in because let key in person and this one is for let key of object dot keys that person very similar and if we log this we get the values i'm pretty sure we could have logged it like this as well let's see yes so i'm not sure what the difference is exactly Anyway, this will output, yep. Using the object.values method, you can iterate over the values of the object. So we can iterate only over the values, because previously we iterated over the keys. Here in this example, we were just logging the keys before I modified it. Let's get this example. So now we are actually for let value of object. So we're only logging the objects. So John Doe 30 developer. Exactly. Using the object that entries method and the for of loop, you can iterate over the key value pairs of an object. Here in this case, let entry. We're saying object that entries. Sorry, that was my phone. Uh, is, yes. Oh, we're saying let entry of object that entries of the person object and then we're logging the entry number one equals and it's well let, let's see how this works because i'm not sure because so the key and the value are uh, on different indexes i guess oh i'm sorry yes so entry is consisting of a key and value pair and the key is the zeroth element and uh, value is the for uh, number one element okay my mistake it's worth noting that these methods and loops are introduced in the CMA script 2017 and not supported in older browsers. Well, okay, well, let's just ask uh, ChatGPT, is there anything else I should know about objects? Let's see what it says. This is to demonstrate that uh, I just created this outline, but you don't have to stick to this. You could just ask anything you like. So chat GPT about JavaScript or objects or arrays or classes. Also make sure to always refer to the documentation, official documentation as well. It says, here are a few more things to know about objects in JavaScript. Objects can have methods, which are functions that are properties of an object. Here's an example. Oh, this is good. So in this case, the person object is being defined with name, age, and occupation attributes or keys we, we should say but then we're defining a function called say hello which then logs hello my name is this that name this refers to the object that this function is in so this is this is essentially referring to the person it's, just, it's a self-reference uh, okay and then you can actually call this just like you're calling the keys except you have to put the parentheses because it's a function let's run this now, if we run this, we should get exactly what it says. Hello, my name is John Doe. And we could have actually changed it. Hello, my age is age. Let's run this. And hello, my... Oh, I should get rid of this. I'm being clumsy today. Run this. Hello, my age is 30. Objects can have properties that are other objects. Here's an example. So if there's a person, which is an object, and in it, there's an object called address, which consists of street, city, and state keys. Okay, this is interesting. Here we go. And we can log person.address. Now we're accessing this object, dot city. We're going to print any town. That is the city 
which this person lives in. JavaScript has a small number of built-in objects, such as the array, string, and date objects. These objects have properties and methods that you can use to perform various operations. JavaScript also has a feature called prototypes, which allows you to create a chain of objects that inherit properties and methods from each other. This allows you to create reusable objects that can be extended and customized as needed. JavaScript also supports object destructuring, which allows you to extract properties from an object and assign them to variables. Here's an example. I just wanted to say before we continue, and we are approaching the end of the video, uh, you can ask about any, uh, you can copy and paste and let ChatGPT explain any one of these topics as well. We're not going to do that in depth in this video, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so what's going on here? Oh, I see. So we're using object destructuring. So see, we're defining these two variables in curly brackets, and then we say equals to person. And we, uh, and then name and age automatically is extracted, uh, I believe from their key key values, if I'm correct. Let's copy this and see. Yeah, so it does, uh, well, let's run it. Yeah, it does say John Doe. What if you were to say occupation here? I just want to see if it just goes by order or by name. Name is not defined. Oh, we have to change this to occupation. All right, run it. Okay, developer. So it is going by name. All right, so it finds the occupation key and then H key and whatever you enter in this uh, deconstructor. There's a feature called feature called object spread operator introduced in, okay? That allows you to copy properties from one object to another. Here's an example. Oh, I see. So we're defining a person one object with name and age and then we're defining person two with dot 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 person one. So it's actually inheriting, it's copying all the properties that person one has plus an occupation, which is developer. So this key doesn't exist in this uh, original object. And then we're logging the second object. Okay. When we print this, we get both the name, age, and the occupation. It's worth noting that JavaScript is a powerful and flexible language, and there's always more to learn and explore when it comes to objects and other features. Okay, that is very true, but uh, we'll end, the, end this video right here. This was all that was in my uh, outline, but you can always go on exploring deeply on your own. And thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you find this content valuable. Take care.